All right, guys, I can't keep up with it. It is crazy today what's going on in the transfer portal. The first day it's open, there's so many kids entering it. We do have rankings that keep getting updated on who are the current top players in the portal. We've got multiple starting QBs entering the portal. We have rumors on where players are going. I'm going to go over all the top current players and then just go kind of a rapid fire through who actually all has entered. So right now they do this where they re-rank all the players and you can see their transfer portal rating. Uh, Fentrell Cypress, the cornerback from Virginia, who I believe is a multi-time uh, uh, ACC you know, first team defensive player, he is entering and he's certainly a player that's going to receive significant interest from a number of high level power five teams. I have not heard any predictions on where he's going, but guys, this is where it gets interesting. We've got Devin Leary, the former NC State starting quarterback who, I, I mean, I would say was thought of as one of the top 10, maybe 15 teams in college football. He is entering the transfer portal. He's got experience. I believe this is going to be a situation where he transfers and it's a one and done. So he transfers somewhere and then he's probably, I would assume, going to try and go to a pretty high level team with a good offense to where he can kind of become a potential draft pick because this will be his last year transferring from NC State. He suffered that season-ending injury, which really knocked NC State out of any sort of high-level bowl uh, with him being injured and really hindered their offense. So right now, I've heard Notre Dame is a possibility. I've heard um, you know, even schools like Alabama or how about Georgia, if they're not happy with their current si situation, Stenson Bennett has gone after this year. Could he be a one and done there at Georgia? They always have a good defense and they've got a lot of offensive weapons. They've done a good job recruiting. Uh, we will see what happens. So he is going to be a high level target. You, ha I'm sure people are a little bit surprised about uh, DJ Uwe Lengile being rated this high. His transfer portal rating is the same as Hudson Card. Guys, DJ Uilangile is one of the most unique quarterback talents in college football. I'm not going to say, you know, he's going to be Joe Burrow or anything like that when it comes to transferring. But the one thing I always say to people, you have to understand, these kids can improve like that. Like, look at Joe Burrow's first season at LSU versus his second season and the improvement he made. If you get DJ into a legit offense with a good coordinator with good weapons around him, and you, I mean, he can run and, and he can just fall forward for three yards with how big he is. Um, you know, it'll be interesting. I, I've heard the West Coast for DJ, maybe a Chip Kelly type situation with DTR leaving. You know, it'll be interesting what happens. I think Oregon also as well, although I've heard Oregon for Hudson Card, the guy below DJ. We will see what happens. It's looking like West Coast possible for DJ Hudson Card. I heard, you know, there are some relations relationships with coaches at Oregon. You know, Oregon is very interesting where they get Bo Nix for one year. Then maybe they turn around and just go back into the portal and get Hudson Card. Uh, you know, this is a guy who possibly could make, you could make an argument. He was better than Quinn Ewers. But it makes sense why Texas would stick with Quinn Ewers with him being younger, with him having more overall talent. And, you know, you would think Quinn Ewers is going to be even better next year with the experience he's gotten under Steve Sarkeesian. It makes sense, but Hudson Card, he's going to be a high-level guy that's going to start at a Power 5 program next year, you would hope and you would think. Because really, he could have easily been the starter at Texas. He was a, a really good backup for them. Uh... J.Q. Hardaway, the transfer from Cincinnati who left right after Luke Fickle announced he was leading for, leaving for uh, Wisconsin. He was supposed to be the next superstar shutdown quarter for Cincinnati. So Hardaway is going to get significant interest from everyone from SEC teams. You know, does Ohio State possibly, uh, you know, look at someone like him, you know, him being from Cincinnati in-state. It'll be interesting. I know they need they need help at cornerback, but he will be courted by elite, elite programs. 
Guys, how about this offensive guard? You guys know who this uh, Cornelius, this offensive guard, reminds me of? How about the center that Michigan got last year from Virginia? This kid from Rhode Island. Oh my goodness. I, I, if I'm Ohio State, I'm all over him. If I'm any team that needs help, these kids from... This kid, they probably studied him. They ranked him really high, even from Rhode Island. These, they've shown the ability to where they go to smaller schools, especially the tackles and the guards, and then they come up to a Power 5 program, and they're still really good. So these, you got to get as many guards, as many tackles as possible. Um, you know, that is a, a, this Cornelius offensive guard, he's a real interesting dude. Uh, McCullough, this kid is a beast, and it's looking like he's going to Oklahoma. That would be a great get for them. He was a top like 60 overall player, originally committed to Ohio State. He ends up decommitting from Ohio State following his, his dad to Indiana, and then his dad actually dipped on him, took a head coaching job somewhere else, and now he had an impact year at Indiana as a true freshman, and what a coup that would be for Brett Venables. I think Brett Venables, guys you know, is really going to have Oklahoma at 10 wins next year. I believe that personally, or at least 9 to 10 wins. It's going to be an improvement uh, for them. We've got, you know, several players from Texas A&M transferring out, including this defensive lineman. I do remember, I think he was either, I think he was committed to Ohio State at one point. Um, the interesting thing with Texas A&M, there are going to be several, and there already have been with Walter Nolan in specific, there's going to be several players that enter the transfer portal from Texas A&M and then, you know, just go back to Texas A&M. So guys, what's happening there is the kids will enter the portal, the A&M boosters will give them more money to come back. So the kids enter the portal after already getting paid to go to A&M in the first place, they enter the portal to leave and then the boosters pay them more money, which is what I think happened to Walter Nolan, to come back. Or they like restructure his deal or something. So that is interesting. How about this tight end from Florida International, guys? Florida International, one of the worst Power 5 programs. Oh my goodness, get this kid to Ohio State. Right at a 92, that's good. Here's another tight end. Mor Kyle Morlock from, I'm not sure who that is. Do we have a, a shorter? I think they're a Division 2 program. But they've scouted him and they've rated him a solid four-star. There's some good tight ends in the portal, guys. This kid, Thornton, he's a little bit lower. He was a top 100 kid in high school and they've re-rated him at a 91. So he moved down. Mason Cobb, a linebacker from Oklahoma State. They've had such a tough season. I, don't, I would love to see where they would show if they're like a sophomore or something. But they don't show that. We already talked about some of these kids. Jimmy Horn Jr., apparently he will be visiting Colorado. I heard about that. Uh, guys, if you don't know, Colorado is going to win minimum eight games next year. Deion Sanders is completely turning around that program, and he's going to do it the exact same way Lincoln Riley did through the transfer portal. I expect them to bring in a minimum of 20 players. Colorado University, who is the worst Power 5 football team this year, they will bring in a minimal, a minimum of 20 players. Deion Sanders, I mean, it's it's public. He was telling players, listen, you need to leave. You you know, we, we're bringing in new players. We're clearing spots. Um, Lacey, so this defensive lineman goes to Oklahoma. They're already off to a great start. On the port in the portal on the defense, Brett Venables. He's already got uh, you know a nice defensive lineman there. Miles Hilton, an offensive tackle. I think his brother went to Michigan, so it'll be interesting. He's rated a 90. Uh, you've got a linebacker from Stanford rated a 90. Theo Weiss, this was a former five-star, I believe, transferring from Oklahoma. That'll be an interesting one. And you've got another linebacker from Tulsa, Jeff Sims. We talked about him in the first update. Ray Davis, a running back from Vanderbilt, gets a bump up to a 90. Um, and you guys can see Brendan Armstrong. So, guys, it's funny. If Brendan Armstrong would have entered the transfer portal last year, they probably would have given <coughs> they probably would have given him a 95 rating. He's all the way down to an 80, 89. He had a terrible year. I wonder if he tries to go the Western Kentucky route. That'll be interesting. Or like a group of five team, maybe. 
Um, but you guys can see Trey Sanders gets rated. Man, has he fallen so much. He was a top 10 player in the country, and now he gets a three-star because he's been injured. A three-star rating. Malik Hornsby is in the portal with the news. Man, he has four years left. The news of KJ Jefferson staying at Arkansas. These kids don't want to stay. They want to play immediately. Um, so those are like the top 30 players to look at. There's some other players down here. Um, oh, this kid. This is the kid that didn't want to play in his conference championship game because he would lose a year. Like he wanted a red shirt or something. That's just, that's ridiculous. This tight end is in the, oh, here we go. So this tight end back in the portal. And he's been, is he seriously going back to Oklahoma again? He was at Oklahoma. Then he transferred to South Carolina. And now he's back in the portal. And they're saying he's going back to, I don't know if that's a recent crystal ball prediction, but that's crazy. Slovis is back in the portal. He's going to he's gonna have to, I think, sit out a year because he's another one who transferred last year to Pittsburgh. And if you transfer twice, unless there's some exemption like, your coach get, gets fired or something, you do have to sit a year. If you transfer back-to-back -back years, I believe that's what that rule is. You need your coach to be fired or something like that. How about Logan Brown, the former five-star offensive tackle out of Michigan? It was such a, a, such a coup when Wisconsin got him, and he transferred apparently to Kansas. So that is interesting. But um, the next thing that I want to look at is just the recent list of Graham Mertz, Rest in peace to Graham Mertz. He'll be going to a group of five program, I'm guessing. I remember him as a recruit. He was wanted by Ryan Day. And take a look at how far he's fallen. Guys, by the way, um, you can see the overall transfer portal rankings right here. Oklahoma, I mean, this is really early. I think all these teams have one commit. But you can see Oklahoma getting that defensive lineman there, uh, leading the pack right now with UCLA in second. Uh, we did hear, there. there's some rumors going around, I heard, about possibly a mass exodus in Clemson University, possibly losing a bunch of players. That'll be something to watch. Now, when it comes to the latest transfers that are all happening today, like this receiver, Darby, I'm guessing this kid probably sees the writing on the wall with two years of eligibility left. He's not going to play. That's a positive for Oklahoma. That clears a roster spot. We've got a linebacker from Maryland. I'm just going to try and look. There's a cornerback from A&M who was a low four-star transferring. Uh, we've got a three-star linebacker from Oregon. I'm just going to try and look for like the big schools and, and see. If we, I mean, this is just, there's so many of these people. They're all, they're, they're like sardines. They just all enter. John Young, I remember him. He was a highly ranked off. Oh no, I guess he wasn't. That was someone else. That was another offensive t guard that went to, to Kentucky. Um, a, another A&M kid. This is a three-star kid. I'm guessing A&M is processing some of these kids out as well to clear more room for their recruiting class. Uh, kid from Ole Miss. There's McCullough. There's DJ. LJ Johnson. He has not received a new rating, but he, I believe, was a true freshman he might be transferring out of AM. We will see. He was rated as a top 100 player. The QB that's transferring out is also a freshman. He was rated a little bit lower. He was rated like, I think, 170. If you're like a 92, you're like around 170th in the nation. Just looking for kind of the bigger schools. Linebacker from USC, low, you know, low three star type player transferring out. Just trying to see if anything catches my eye here, guys, on the overall schools. Another AM defensive tack, defensive lineman we talked about, Slovis. We talked about uh, Tristan Monday, a kid from Wisconsin transferring. Looks like he's going to Arizona State. Nothing too big there. Linebacker from FSU transferring out, former lower end four star. Cody Jackson, this kid, I remember he was a, almost a top 100 player. I thought he was committed to Oklahoma at one point. I guess he decommitted and went to Houston. Unless he transferred to Houston from Oklahoma. It's so, the, keeping track of these kids is very hard. Because they're just, they're ping-ponging around. They go five different schools. Uh, PJ Williams, wow. PJ Williams, former top 100 player, transferring to... We don't know. Transferring possibly out of AM. AM is losing a lot of players. A safety from Texas, who was a solid four star recruit, transferring from there. Um, 
Yeah, I, I think I'm just going to look and see if any of these... I mean, it's just there's so many kids. Kind of hard to keep track of them. Uh, Thornton, we talked about. So I think that's probably... They're just making sure everything is official. But that is probably going to do it for this update. I mean, there is just so many players. I'll see if we can run. A lot of these are smaller schools. You're not going to get... Although, guys, I, I, it's not in here right now. Wow, there's a highly ranked offensive tackle transferring out of Oregon. Holy crap. I don't remember him at all. He said he was a top 100 player. There's an offensive guard that's transferring from Alabama. I don't think it's shown up yet, but... Oh, this kid, wow, a QB from... That That might be writing on the wall right there. Jay Butterfield, who was like, I want to say a top 200 kid, like two years ago. He's transferring out of Oregon. That might tell me that Oregon is going to be really involved with either DJ Uilangile or Devin Leary uh, or even Hudson Card. I think they want to keep that thing going. They had so much success with Bo Nix. So I'm guessing they probably want to do something like that. A pretty highly ranked linebacker. Wow, almost the top 100 player transferring from North Carolina. That was when he was a recruit. They're going to have to re-rank all these guys, of course. And, and a lot of them are probably going to move down from where their high school was. Except like this is a kid that moved up significantly, the Florida international tight end. I, I really think Ohio's Christian Turner is transferring again. Christian Turner was at Michigan. He transferred to Wake Forest. Now he's transferring again. I really think Ohio State, Cade Stover is not cutting it. He cannot catch. You have to go get some a kid like this. Ryan Day needs to do something, in my opinion. There's Hudson Card. So, yeah, another kid from AM, kind of a lower four-star, probably sees the writing on the wall. He's not going to... Yeah, dude, if you're a, a defensive lineman on AM, that's like a low four... Well, actually, this kid was probably like, like ranked around 200th. Dude, GG. You got to transfer, bro. I mean, they got like seven guys that were five stars. There's the number one prize right now. Fentrell Cypress, who is a shutdown cornerback. He's going to be getting money NIL offers all over the place. I think he seriously needs to consider, if I was him, I'd be looking at a school like Ohio State because, you know, they need some help there at the cornerback position. Uh, Jalen Johnson, it's not surprising. Not surprising at all. That's one where he's not getting playing time. He sees the writing on the wall. He might transfer to Cincinnati or a program like that. Um, a running back, four-star, possibly going to Georgia Tech. I mean, this is all just today. Oh, they've got that kid listed twice. But this is all just today. They, these are all official. We knew about some of these before today, but they're all be, they've are all they all been processed because today was the first day the portal opened. We've got a lower three-star receiver. I'm sure Tennessee's probably actually happy that kid is transferring. A lot of these things, um, we're getting all these kids listed twice now. I think that I think it might be glitched because I've gone so far down. Yeah, I think I've glitched it. So guys, you can take a look at the big board, the top five guys right now. This could change in an hour because they're rating guys constantly. So, I mean, it is what it is. I'm just trying to give everyone a, as good of an update as possible. This offensive guard is really intriguing from Rhode Island of all places. That's an impressive rating of a 93. Um, and then this tight end from FIU. This kid who's a Division II tight end. There's some interesting players already in the portal. So we will see what happens, especially with these three quarterbacks that are rated so highly with Devin Larry leading it. Where will he end up? Uh, there's a lot of speculation. We will see and, and possibly do updates daily or kind of maybe every other day, depending on the news on the portal. But guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description. I'm, of course, the Depressed Ginger. Thank you for watching.